Well, hello, Sir Sec. Tis I, Sir Creakieth of the Blinder. Uh, what the hell are you talking like that for, you freak? Forsooth, brave knight. How eth are you doing, eth, today? Eth. You do realise I'm not actually a knight from the olden times, don't you, Creaky? I'm something else. So I do not need eth to be speaking like this, then? Well, no, not unless you want people to think you are really, really strange. Actually, you may be too late for that. And take off that stupid helmet, you look ridiculous. Anyway, why am I here? I uh, can't actually remember, but I do remember that it was something to do with mud and YouTube and fossils. And I like my helmet. Useful as always, then. Well, I have one idea. We should totally- Roger. Excuse me? We're not even going to warm up to it. Just straight down to business. You could at least buy me dinner. No, you perv mud fossil university, Roger. I knew that. <laughs> what do you think I meant? Nothing. Shut up. Doesn't matter. Carry on. So, you eh? and I... Hang on a second. Did you think I meant... Roger in? <laughs> You're doing it again, Eth. Now, oh, crap. Now you've got me doing it. <laughs> Remember the video I sent you about our pal Roger? Well, I've had this amazing idea. Why don't we each make a video about that video and whoever's is worst? Worst. Whoever's is worst wins, right? How did you know that's what I was going to say? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because it was my idea and we have already recorded the intro for the video I am uploading about Roger saying pretty much exactly that. Okay, how about this then? I will ask my subscribers to vote in the comment section. Again, that was my idea, Creaky. You know you're effectively stealing from me, right? Hello? Hello? Sec? Are you still there? Damn. What a shame we seem to have lost Sir Sec. Well, okay then, let's get this road on the show. Show on the road, dumbass. Ah, sorry, Sec, you're back. <laughs> Goodie. I thought we'd lost you for a second there. Oh, just get on with the video, you strange little Welshman. Donuts on my nuts. You know, I have found so many crazy, crazy things that now I, I almost feel like I am going crazy. You, Roger? Crazy? No way! Tidy! There's a possibility that these things were not manufactured by people, they were living creatures. Okay, well in that case, would the jury please strike my last comment from the... thingy? I don't know, do I? I'm not a judge. Entities. Now, watch what she says, and I'm going to show you some... what well, looks like it might be biology. I have no idea. I haven't touched these. I haven't been there. I need to see the microscopic shots of the tissues. Then I'd be able to tell. But a pile of old rocks, no matter how ornately they're carved, just don't have tissues. Do they? Watch. And they find some pieces of the pottery. You see this? These things are not hollow. They have something inside of them and that looks to me just like what you would see on a shoulder but it's a hole i i've not got a hole in my shoulder hang on why am i bothering to try and explain this the last video i made about you you thought a footpath was a dragon's tail and then this kind of stuff here is black and so forth 100 percent you could tell one way or the other that's all i care about it's one way or the other is it possible and I see signs that show me that, they, you know, I see things that say, ah, that's crazy. There's no way in the world that's, that's, um... Anything other than rock? Real. Well, yeah, I suppose it's real in the sense that the Terracotta Army was discovered in March 1974. And then, because, I mean, I, they, don't, they, don't, they don't look real, real. Ah, real, real, as opposed to pretend real? Or do you mean pareidolia real, which isn't real? Well, no, pareidolia is real, but what you think you see isn't really real. Really? I'm going to show you some things that don't look real real, and they are real they real. Are really? You mean like real dragon's tail? And other really, really real, real stuff. Which is what Roger seems to specialize in. For real. You see this? This could literally be skin. I am serious. 
Oh yeah, we know you're serious, Roger. And to be honest, that's what worries me. But it could just be a nose made out of some real rock. It's definitely a nose, I know we can all see that. But as per usual, Roger, it would seem that only you, and of course the 94,000 people that subscribe to you, can literally see real skin. I'm going to show you a couple things, and then, then you'll understand why I say making these statements. It's fine. We already understand why you make these statements, Roger. It's because you are the Prince of Paradolia, and you literally see things that just aren't there all the time. All right, now, she says they believed in the afterlife, like it's not real, and they went ahead and took their servants with them to the afterlife. Right, hang on a second. Before we slip any further into Roger's rabbit hole, let's have a look and see what the Terracotta Army really is. It's an archaeological discovery. The warriors were found by farmers in China by accident. Nobody was looking for them, but it turns out it's one of the largest excavations undertaken in China. And there were literally hundreds of these warriors, all with their own facial features, stood in various different poses, but all facing east, which was the direction that the first emperor of China's enemies came from. So no mention of them actually ever being real people there, Roger. No. What I want you to look at is it what we what you want to look for is you want to look for what Roger colors of blood reds in the area where there might have been an artery or somewhere and then you also look for these tissue types which I will show you they call it a feldspar it's really fascia and it's very very easy to see but feldspar is just an abundant rock forming type of mineral, typically occurring as colourless or pale coloured. So I'm not entirely sure where you're going with this, and I'm getting extremely confused. Because aren't the terracotta warriors made of terracotta, which is clay that's been fired in a kiln? The, the elite, when the elite died, like a king or a noble person, they took these people with them but now then she makes a determination, oh, they must have just stopped doing that and, and made these out of terracotta. Well, to be fair to her, I would be more inclined to call it an educated guess because I would imagine that even 3,000 years ago in China, human sacrifice was pretty frowned upon. Well, terracotta is clay. That's what we're made out of is clay. I knew if I was patient, you'd get something right eventually. Yeah, terracotta is clay. But we aren't, are we? That's just total conjecture. There's absolutely no way in the world that they, they could make that determination. They had no, they, there's nothing written about these as far as I know. No, absolutely nothing at all. And let's be honest, if Roger doesn't know about this stuff, then who the hell does? Well, when I say nothing, I mean apart from the 6,830,000 search results that the internet returns when you search for the Terracotta Warriors. But apart from that, there's next to nothing. You're right, Rog. <laughs> but I am seeing things... That aren't there? Because I literally right at this moment, I am almost the only one on the face, a face of planet Earth that understands the biology of geology. Geology is biology. I've shown it a thousand times. Well, using that logic, no, it doesn't matter. But I will say that by your own admission, you were the only person on the face of the earth, he did say face, didn't he? That understands that biology is geology is a pretty good indication that it, well, isn't. And the fact that it isn't is probably the reason why nobody else claims that it is. And I want to see those things, I want to see some microscopic shots of the tissue types. Or, well, not when I say tissue types. <laughs> <laughs> There's no tissue in rock, Roger. Okay, my friends, this is human anatomy, and it is very specific, and it c can be extremely detailed. You are kidding, right? Human anatomy? Detailed? What? I'm going to show you things and knock your socks off. That is 100%, no question whatsoever, was a living creature at one time. Now, you look at it and you say, oh, Roger, how can you tell? Now, Roger, when you make a claim as bold as 
you can say with 100% certainty that this statue was once a living creature, I do have many questions. How many bumps on the head have you had? When did you last get a psych evaluation? But, oh Roger, how can you tell is definitely not one of the questions I would ask. These tissue types, first of all, change from lips, eyes, face, all the things. On the layer of the neck underneath, you're going to see blood vessels coming up. There's going to be an artery and a vein. That's just oh, the nature of every creature appears. Creatures, yes. Rocks, no. Rocks don't have veins or arteries. And I would imagine that that's where the saying, you can't get blood out of a stone, comes from. Because it's not there in the first place. All right, there's the flutes in the back of the head. You see that? That's cracked. And that is blood. Red blood. Now, blood keeps its color. The uh, the other blood, your vein blood, is 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 blue in your body, and black in mud fossils. But why is blood blue in your body? It it isn't. But why do you think it is, Roger? It's because veins are blue, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Blood is always red. Blood that's been oxygenated, the blood that flows through our arteries, is bright red. And the blood that flows through our veins is red. It's dark red, but it's still red because it's lost most of its oxygen on the return trip. The fact that we see our veins as blue is more to do with the way colour interacts with our eyes and our senses. It's got nothing to do with the fact that veins are actually blue, and blood definitely isn't blue. But of course, I'm talking about veins and blood in human beings. I know nothing about veins, blood, and arteries in rocks. That's your area of expertise, Rog. All right, there's the bottom of the throat. This is where the throat comes up. The chin is out here. It looks like it had a tongue, a forked tongue or something that came out like this. This is some structures that you know, like the tendons of the neck or something, and the neck bone, I don't know, whatever it is, but this, this the damn thing was real. I wonder if Rod just got kids, or even grandkids, because his bedtime stories must be amazing, because his imagination, well, is second to none. You see that, this, this is how this whole thing basically started. This, this head was real too, absolutely, 100%. And it, it, Arlie Caudle, and uh, it, it belongs to Arlie Caudle, Jim Burchill, and I researched it, and uh, Jim took it down, it had a cat skin and everything. There's the nose, there's the cartilage in the nose, there's the flesh of the nose pushed off. There's the guy eye. You know, if you look at these things and take your time and look very carefully, I mean, it just looks like sandstone, and that's what, here's what the real problem was. Scott Walter got on TV, said, oh, that's just a sandstone head, that's nothing, and he made a, you know, he just destroyed my research. That is a real head, that is blood, it can even be tested now. I was the first one to have DNA tested on these ancient things. Thing. So not specimens or examples, things. Now, being the world's foremost expert on imaginary rock people, sorry, I mean mud fossils, I would have thought you would have been more inclined to use more scientific terms. But, okay, things it is. Right here, a giant human fingertip. I don't care what anybody says, it's real, it's tested, it's DNA certified. Mm -hmm. DNA certified, eh? Well, who am I to call you wrong then? If you would just be kind enough to make the DNA certification public, or you could even email it to me, creaky at creakyblinder.com. I would just love to take a look at it. And then I'll be more than happy to issue a public apology for making fun of you on YouTube. <sighs> and the terracotta warriors, I saw some things in there that I... That... <laughs> you okay there, Rog, or are you just a Sir Bruce Forsyth fan? Like me? <laughs> like this is a goose. Really? Come on, Roger. If I take my glasses off and maybe squint and tilt my head a little bit, it possibly sort of maybe looks like a goose head shaped rock but it's still just a rock you see it's solid as a goose but th that that is the feathers or the pattern of the goose's head but this fabric has tissues within it that are definable 
they can change depending upon the conditions that it finds itself in the ground. Now with all this talk of rocks and, and studying Roger's videos and, and seeing rocks that look like geese and rocks that look like human heads, I was inspired to go out and explore myself and find some rocks of my own. And boy did I make a discovery. Now this rock, clearly, with 100% certainty, looks exactly the same as a rock. And inside this rock, believe it or not, you'll find more rock. It's just absolutely amazing. Like right here, this is a new species, a noto. Well, I walked right into that one, didn't I? I mean... What else are you going to do if you find a rock that doesn't resemble anything else? Just call it a new species. <laughs> Stupid creaky. We have these in huge amounts. We know, you know, they, they were all over the earth. Woo! Rocks. All over the earth. <laughs> Imagine that. All right, I want to make something clear. And actually, so do I. And please don't say that's a lung. That's a lung. I did actually say don't say that's a lung. This was exactly the same, still had its plura on there. It may look entirely different. It may look... Like a rock? It may ha have been in a condition where it, it went like this. It, it depends on the conditions they're in and the minerals that are in it, what invades it. Let's just start with that. Like, this is a bone. That's a bonehead. And if there's anybody on the face of the earth, sorry, on the face of the earth, that's qualified to identify something as a bonehead, it would be you, Roger. Because you are a bonehead. Oh, I love Roger, and thanks for watching, everybody. And don't forget, this is a competition between me and that night bloke. So don't forget to let me know down in the comment section whose video was the worst, mine or Sir Sex. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. All right, all right, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blinder.